Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Good morning to everybody. We certainly want to take a moment and appreciate the Lord because this is still the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we want to be able to rejoice and to be glad in it. One of the things that I have discovered is when God makes up his mind and he wants someone near him, amen, all we can do is express gratitude to him for giving them to us for the time that he has. And so let's take a moment and just appreciate the Lord for all that he's done. I know it's a challenge, but come on, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. And so we thank God for you. We honor our heavenly father. He is our maker and our creator. We praise him for his son who is our savior, Jesus the Christ. Thank him for the Holy Spirit who enables us to be able to deal with difficult times that we have to face even in this life. To the bereaved family, we certainly do want to extend our condolences to you, but I believe in this moment it would be to Tamala's will that we would rejoice, amen, in what the Lord has given for us, amen, given after he has given her unto us for the time that we have, and so we're grateful. The program this morning is requiring and asking that Sister Brittany Belcher will come and read scripture for us, and then we will be blessed with selection by our dear brother, Davari. Amen. Brittany at this time. Hello, hello. Okay. Um, for the Old Testament, I will be reading from Psalm 61, 1 and 4. O oh God, listen to my cry, hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the towering rock of safety, for you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Let me live forever in your sanctuary, safe beneath the shelter of your wings. And for the New Testament, I will be reading Matthew 11 and 30. For you are my, for my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden I give you is light. Amen. Greetings to all. Thank you, Brittany, for this invitation to the family. My condolences. And I just want to render the song to you guys with to inspire hope and love. Um, on this day, this song says, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. Boy, and I... I look around and I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. And I ask a question, Lord. Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. Oh, the Lord's been good to me. He been good to me more than this whole world 
God could ever be. He's been good to me. He dried my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. Yes. So I'll just say thank you, Lord. Um, I, I won't complain. Oh, the Lord, he's been good to me. He been good to me more than this whole world could ever be he's been good to me oh he dried my tears away oh he turned my midnight into day so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Oh, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. 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 I, I won't complain. Oh, oh. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm, God, we bless you. God, we just thank you. God, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. This next song says, I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. I'll win it all over. When it's all over, oh, and I shall see his face. Yeah, yeah, God, I shall see his face. When it's all over. Mm, when it's all over, this is my favorite part. Oh, I'm going to put on my robe and what? Tell the story how I made it over. Come on, tell your story. Oh, I'm going to put on my, my robe and tell, tell the story how I made it over. God, we've had trials and tribulations, God, but we've made it on today. I'm going to put, I'm going to put on my robe. Tell the story how I made it. God, we thank you, God, for keeping us all. I'm going to put, put on my robe and tell the story how I made it. say soon, soon as I get home. Soon as I get home. Thank you.
Come on, let's give them clean. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the most difficult things not to do is complain when you're hurting and you don't understand why God does the things that he does. But I'm learning to embrace his sovereignty. I'm learning to try to give him things to the bereaved family. I've sat where you sit many a times. Couldn't understand why the Lord would take my loved one. And I don't like to use the word take. Or why he would allow them transition and leave me with the pain. But I realized something. He gave them to us. And in the giving of them to us, he made sure they left a part of them with us. And I know each one of you who sit there today have a part of her in your heart, a part of her in your life. And so her legacy that she leaves with you is what you're going to have to pull on, what you're going to have to hold on, that God bless you to be able to have such a gift in your family. And we're grateful to him for it. Let's give God one more praise at this time. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the family has set aside time for open remarks and reflections and requesting that we do our best to keep them at a two-minute time frame. So we want to provide that space at this time if there is a family member who wants to come and share those brief remarks you are able to do at this time. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, come on. Somebody tell us. I wasn't blessed to know Tamala like you all, so I'm, I'm looking for y'all to share some some of those dreams and thoughts and, that you had with her. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll start over. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I hear me? So I'm Darrell, I'm Brittany's husband. Um, I've been knowing Tam since um, she brought me down to see the family um, in February around Amari's birthday back in 2016. And around the first time <laughs> when I met her, we went to um, uh, Brittany's grandmother's house and her grandmother has a cowboy's room and I'm a redskin. So I end up, you know, I'm, I'm like, hey, I want to go just go relax, go chill. So I went inside the room, and then like five minutes later, she pop up, and she said, what you doing in here? I knew you was a fan all along. I knew you was a fan. And she took her phone out, and she took some photos. If she was still here, she still got the photo probably in her, in her files. But, yeah, like, we've been going at it over the past years, man, like, with our rivalry of me. And her mom also, you know, even Mr. Dwight not around, they would be jumping me. They, her, her mom was talking trash to me nonstop. But it was all, it was nothing but good times. Every time we get around each other, it's nothing but good times, man. Every time she came around, it was all love. We had a good time. It was all, all beautiful. And she also took care of my daughter for me. Um, when I first started, when I first got here, she was the first person me and Brittany thought of that they can look out for us. So I can get to work. And she, she just nothing but love, man. She. Like nothing but love, nothing but fun. She was all life, all energy. You know, I got videos of her, you know, having fun, you know. <laughs> I can't have my phone though, you know. But uh yeah, we had a lot of fun though, man, and uh, I'm gonna miss her, man. I'm gonna miss her. She was she was real cool. I call her my little sister. Of course she was younger than me, you know, she was twenty five, man, and um I love her. And she was part of the light skin crew that I always say. Yeah. <laughs> her, her mama and my daughter, you know. And her also, her aunts, and they all, I, I was like, yeah, her, her, every time her mama and her and my daughter get together, I say, y'all just, y'all light up the whole house, you know. <laughs> y'all too, y'all too bright. But, but yeah, I'm going to miss her, though, and I love her, man. And, um, yeah, and God got her. God, he got her. He got her. Everyone would come from all over 
I, I'm usually coming from Norfolk State College or whatever, and you know, Sparkle would come out, and all of us, my mom, everybody would come out and just gather together, and we would have some type of family night. And yeah, she would. No, that's that was candy made of popcorn. But um, <laughs> it was it was always just a good time, my family times, and um, the last the last gathering we had. Uh, we, we, we still try to keep it up, even though Candy passed away, Dad still tried to keep the tradition going. So, you know, last event, major event that we had was 4th of July, and we started at like, what, seven, eight, we spent almost $600, y'all, between all of us, me, Dad, and Tamala, on um, fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> And we was all at Daddy's house. We started at like eight. The sun even wasn't even down yet. We were just so excited. Um, and we had all these fireworks. We didn't even finish till going on what ten, almost eleven at night. And Ken, uh, not Ken, Tamala had bought uh, this pink. It was a pink, pink fireworks. It was like almost what two hundred dollars. A pink fireworks, and. She was just, she was like, this is a memory of my mom. And that, it was huge. Like, and it went for a long, long time. Um, but it was, it was just nice to have all of us together. And I'll, I'll, I'll carry that with me because, you know, we had a good time. And Brielle and Alika were everywhere. And it, it was just good to be able to have that, carry that tradition that Candy originally started. But we, we tried our best to keep it going, so I'm just, I'll keep that with us forever. Okay, hello? Hello. Okay. Okay. Um, I wasn't able to speak at my sister's funeral, but, um, Tamla, she left with a good heart. Um, I was telling the family over the last day or so, um, I got a chance to look at some of her messages and things, you know. Everybody's looking for closure. Everybody wants closure. And I don't think that's something we're going to receive, um, but we just have to accept what it is and that she's gone, but she's forever in our hearts. Um, Tamala, she, you know, she, with her health conditions, she wasn't able to, you know, live a typical young adult life like we did, you know. But as I just read, you know, her conversations with her friends and, you know, I would say the last month of her life, she was truly trying to live her life. She really, she was happy. She was happy with her limitations. She knew that she couldn't do as much. She knew that she probably, she, I really felt that she knew that she wasn't going to be here much longer. And I told my brother-in-law many times, she kept saying something isn't right. She kept saying it's in the air, I just feel it. She kept saying that to several of her friends in the messages. But I also know that even with that, she still was happy just trying to be herself, just trying to live. And that brings me joy that she really was, she was happy. She, she was, truly was happy. She just wanted to be a, a normal young adult like the rest of us. And I know that was difficult for her. And I know Dwight, you know, she, she admired you, Dwight. She admired you so much. She loved this family so much, God. Even in her grief, she she only kept thinking about Dwight. She's always mentioned, let me go check on my dad. Let me make sure he's okay. She admired you so much, Dwight. And I, I just love you all for being who you all have been for her. Because I know it meant the world to her. And I remember when she, I will never forget when she first went to college, 
And we know she fell down. We all know that. We know Tamala was just being Tamala. <laughs> and she and she did, she wasn't honest with the reason <laughs> at the time. And so I came down and I was talking to her and she said, you know what, Auntie, I'm just gonna be honest with you. She said, she said, she said, you know, I really just wasn't trying. I was just having fun. And I told her, I said, niece, that's, you know, that's part of the college experience, but you know, it has to be something you want to do. And even still with that, she just said, I just didn't want to tell my daddy that. Let's talk about the white. <laughs> And I just knew from even back then, I mean, you, she truly admired you. She really did. Just the way I admired my father. So even, even with all that has happened with her passing in the funeral, I just have a little bit of peace knowing, you know, she, she was happy. She was really trying to be a typical, irresponsible 25 year old she really gave her all to that but even still in her grief that she was still going with with my sister her mom i mean she admired the white she admired him and that just makes me <laughs> she love you guys she does she love you all so much. <laughs> well, I don't know why I would have to get this mic, but um, Mr. Dwight, this is confirmation again. Remember what I told you when your wife passed away? Look around. Those that are here are here for you. Those that are not, they never were. And what she just said is confirmation. After you're done, all you can. And the way she admired you, you just stand. God still got your back. Amen. Is there any others that want to express their hearts? The last thing I want is to Matthew was saying, I wish I would have said this or that. Amen. But we're certainly thankful to the Lord for the family sharing that with us. Amen. Um, we got one. All right. Amen. Come on, Dominic. Before me and before Tama passed, we were both being petty. So we were both being petty. So we weren't really talking. But you know, before that, we were really close. We used to hang out all the time. Just come to the house and we would watch movies. And then, like Brittany said, when we go to movie nights, I would be like, me and Tam would be like, we watch this good movie. Let's watch this. And we watch Maleficent or something, the scary movie. And like, we would always do that. We would always pick real, like, look on Prime and watch movies together. Or sometimes she didn't want to get out the house, so I would go over there sometimes and lay in the bed with her. And she was different after her mom passed. She was way more willing to go out and have fun. Like Sparkle said, she was she was really trying to live. She really was. When I took her to with my friends, which was my first time really taking her out with a group, because she never really liked to do group stuff, so it was always me one on one with her. But I took her out in a group setting and she was so different. Like she was dancing, she was singing. She was just a Tamla I've never seen before. And from that moment, it's like she just kept to continuing like traveling. And I was like, part of me was mad that she was trying to go places because I wanted to stay home where we knew she was safe. But she really wanted to live. She really, she wanted to. And I'm glad that she did get the chance to do some of the things she wanted to do. She liked animals, so she went to a petting zoo in North or South Carolina. Like, I'm glad she got to do the things that she wanted to do. And I'm just, I don't, I'm, yeah. Hey, man. I just want to remind you, and there are some of us here that did not get an opportunity to know Pamela like you did. 
And so when you share your hearts with us, you, you bring her to life for us. And we get an opportunity to say, wow, maybe I wish I had someone like that in my family. And so I appreciate the words that have been expressed. We can read about the obituary on the day long, but when you all express it in words, you bring the obituary to life. And so we appreciate you, amen, being bold enough and loving and caring enough to come and share, amen, your thoughts on today. Uh, if there be no others at this time, we're going to ask. Now, I mess this name up, and so I don't want to do that. Uh, Mrs. Carter to come in and uh, read our obituary for us. Mic check, one, two. Okay. All right. Internet. Okay. Tamela Antoinette Rochelle Bird gained her wings on July 17, 2022, at age 25. Tamela was born to Kelly Bird Sr. and Lasagna Belcher on October 25, 1996, in Lawton, Oklahoma. Tamela is preceded in glory by her mother, Lasagna Belcher, grandfather, Archie Nelson Jr., grandparents, great grandparents, Archie Sr. and Fanny Nelson and Georgia Lee Rhodes Granny. She graduated in 2015 from Bradwell Institute in Hinesville, Georgia, and attended Georgia Southern University from 2015 to 2016. Tamla was a phenomenal makeup artist, but after losing her mother, she poured her heart into finding something to do in honor of her mom. Thus, she was inspired to start a t-shirt business named Internet Tees. Tamela was loved by her blended family. She is survived by her fathers, Kelly Bird and Dwight Belcher, grandmother, Sonia Butler, Tammy Bird, and Alice Carter, brother, Kelly Bird Jr., sisters, Brittany Belcher Powell, her husband, Daryl, and Dominique McGee, nieces, Kayla Bird, Alika McGee, and Brielle Powell, nephews, Cavante Bird, and Amari Belcher, and a host of uncles, aunties, friends, and relatives. Hey Amen. Thank you for the reading of our obituary. Um, I want to say to the right and to the family, thank you so much for allowing me to share some words of comfort uh, with you all on today. Uh, not knowing uh, Tamala, uh, I had to reach out to the family to try to find some words that I would help me along the way. And I'm so glad that they came easily from the family, because uh, sometimes, if I'm being honest, we got some family members that are a little strange. <laughs> you know, I'm be honest. We all have them. We were grateful when I read the words. I was like, wow, she sounded like someone who I would love to be around and have around me. And the way she expressed and hearing it again about her father, amen, that's quite commendable, particularly in the African-American community, if I can say that, amen, well done, amen. And I know that your daughter will certainly carry that with her even until today. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful and we're grateful even for the things that we don't understand and even for the things that hurt us to our hearts. We come to the understanding and the realization that you are God and above all, there is no other. So we are learning to say thank you for all that you give us, and that even which you took for yourself. And so now, Father, as we prepare to just share both words with this family, bless them with grace, so that it will bless them and cause them to remember uh, this wonderful daughter, this wonderful sister that you have given unto us. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Whenever I am sharing uh, with a family, particularly at times like this, I always want to try to remember and recall what would the family member who has transitioned say to the family? What message would they want to say back to them? So that as I'm going on to be with the Lord, what is it that I want to leave with my family? What's my message? Even though it may have been lived out before you, I'm just certain that there's always a message that the one who's transitioned always wants to leave with the family. And so driven by that thought, I want you to uh, uh, go with me if you read or look at the scripture that's found in the Gospel according to St. John, 
chapter number 10 and verse number 10, where Jesus says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and have that more abundantly. So I believe after reading what was provided to me that Pamela's message would be to her family, live life to the fullest because you only get it once. Live your life to the fullest because you're only going to get it once. I mean, that's a true statement. The difficulty, though, is we often measure life numerically in years. And so if we have a brief amount of years, we think that God has been unjust. But the reality of it is life is not measured in the numerical number of years, but it's measured in what we do with those number of years. And so some people will live their life to the fullest with a brief period of years, and some will live a long life and do nothing with it. I think the Tamil's message to the family would be, please, whatever you do, live your life to the fullest because you're only going to get it once. So I, I, I must say, Brittany, that I was really motivated and inspired by the brief but detailed description I was given by the family concerning how Tamil lived her life, particularly as she approached her final days. And I guess what inspired me the most is that based on the description that I was provided on how she chose to live her life, it was clear that she understood what Jesus had in mind when he said there's a thief out there. And that thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I think she didn't leave it at that, but she had to remember that, you know what, I can't sit here and not live my life because Jesus promised that I can let you know my life and you will know abundantly. Abundance, again, cannot be measured numerically because you can have abundance of life in a very brief period of time. I think all of us would, would do well uh, to realize that whenever we begin doing things like setting goals and establishing dreams, you can believe that the thief gets the most. I'm going to say it again. When we begin establishing our dreams, and we began setting our goals. It's like the thief gets the news. Oh, she done got serious about her life. But at that point, he doesn't really concern himself with your life. It is only until you get serious about your life and start setting some goals, establishing some dreams, saying regardless of the things that are going on in my life, God must have something for me. When we make it up in our minds, that we're going to live our life to the fullest, I believe the thief gets the news. Because any life that is being lived and not lived to the fullest is an empty life. Any life that is being lived and not lived to the fullest is a life that has no purpose and no meaning. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to leave this life and take my dreams to the grave. I don't want to leave this life and not fulfill what God placed me in the earth to accomplish. And even though the thief is relentless in his efforts to steal, kill, and destroy, he can never succeed when a person decides to live their life to the fullest. I'm thoroughly convinced that when we make it up in our minds, and I think Tamil would echo those sentiments, that when she made it up in her mind that I'm going to live my life to the fullest, there was nothing that the thief could take from her. There's nothing that the thief can rob you and I of when God decides to allow us to accomplish what he put us on the earth to accomplish. Because when we stand before him, how many know we have to give an account for what he gave us? So it sounded like to me, uh, the more I knew, that Tamil came into her own and began to realize that the Lord Jesus had come that she might have this life and have it more abundantly, and she refused to let the thief rob her of her God-given hopes and dreams. So I want to say to us today, be careful of people who attempt to bring drama to your dreams. Be careful of people 
who attempt to bring anxiety to your aspirations because their desire is to keep you from living your life to the fullest. And you don't realize how awesome you are oftentimes until it's too late. You don't realize how power-packed your life is oftentimes until it's too late. But what a blessing that from what I read, she realized who she was. She realized the destiny that she had before she left this earth. That's enough to give God praise for her, even though you're hurting. And so I don't know about you, but I've come to believe that we need people in our lives that help us to live our lives to the fullest. That's why it's a blessing to have family. We need people in our lives who are designed to help us to live our lives to the fullest. I call them instruments in the hands of a mighty God. And sometimes we have to realize that part of my life is to be a blessing to somebody else's life. And the way you all described Tamala, it sounds like she knew that she was making an impact in you all's life, even though her life may have been limited. But the blessing is she had you in her life to bless her life. And I think the message that she would leave was, I thank God that I had a father. I had a father who was her voice of encouragement. Everybody needs somebody in their life who serves as a voice of encouragement. That even when you feel discouraged, even when you feel like I can't go on, even when you feel like there is nothing really left here for me to do, aren't you glad that you have a voice of encouragement? Somebody that will come and encourage you. Dwight, I think you did, from what I've heard and from what I've read, she was just grateful to have you in her ear and in her life. A voice that would convince her that she could do what she perhaps felt like she couldn't do. All of us need somebody who will whisper in our ear and tell us you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you. Everybody needs someone who will whisper in our ear, particularly in those times when we feel down and we feel inadequate and we feel like there is no help for You ought to give God praise. If you've got a father in your life, if you've got a father figure in your life, if you've got someone in your life who speaks positively to you in negative situations, you ought to just give God praise. Because you'd be shocked at the amount of people who leave this earth having no one to encourage them. And so I believe she was able to live her life to the fullest because she had a father who would encourage her. I believe she would tell us, I lived my life to the fullest not only because I had a father, but because I had a family. I had family members in my life who were, like my father, a voice of an encouragement, but the family is a source of inspiration. This is why we must fight and do all that we can to, particularly in blended families, do all we can to be a source of inspiration because we need one another. And I believe that that would be Tamala's heart cry to her family is thank you for being my source of inspiration. Thank you for being someone who I could look to when I didn't feel my best. Thank you for those parties and those nights that you all mentioned. I, I, I believe that it inspired her and caused her to realize that even though I may have my challenges, I got a great family. And it is a blessing that when you feel uh, inadequate at times, you can look to your family and they can make you feel like you're superwoman or superman. Amen. That's the blessing of having a family as a source of inspiration, a father as a voice of encouragement. And I think what Jesus gave her was a future, something that she could realize, I have hope for my final destination. So in spite of my limited years here on the earth, maybe I should live my life to the fullest because somebody's watching over me, and his name is Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I believe she was thinking, like I'm thinking, that when I meet him, I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter ye in into the joy of the Lord. You fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You didn't throw in the towel and you didn't quit. You encouraged others when you really didn't feel encouraged yourself. 
So I don't want us to sit oftentimes and cry tears of bitter sadness because our loved one is gone. Every now and then we should cry tears of joy that we had years with them, that they are now in the place where they can rejoice because they're serving with the God of their salvation. So as I encourage you on today, live your life to the fullest. I believe that's what Tamala would want. I believe that's what the Lord would want. I believe we need to understand that there is a thief that coming to try to rob you of your life. But there's also a master who says, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Live your life in the abundance. Live it in the fullest. And I believe that God will bless you in your effort to do so. Come on, let's say thank the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful and we're grateful. Oftentimes, again, we don't understand. Oftentimes, again, we're not prepared for that which you unveil before us. But we want to take a moment and tell you thank you. We believe that the family were witnesses of how Tamala lived her life to the fullest. As brief as it may have been in our eyes, it was impactful to you in glory. And so we tell you thank you. I pray for this family, Lord, that as they lay their loved one to rest, as they cope with the transition, that you'll remind them, Lord, that even though the body may be absent, the memories will always be present. Even though the body may be absent, the legacy lives on through them. So bless them. Be the strength and the comfort in their lives that they'll need when this day passes and they have to continue on living her life, living life through her. And we thank you for it. And now, God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let everybody say thank God, amen, and amen. All right, we're going to turn it into the hands of the funeral home directors. Would you say thank God as they come? 